Across Britain there are hundreds of castles. Millions of people each year travel to the UK to visit historic fortifications and buildings, to immerse themselves in the past. Just walking through the gatehouse of a castle can transport you to a place where centuries ago rich elves would be walking, and in many cases even some of history's most famous kings and queens would have stayed there and visited. You can walk through the Queen's bedchambers, can visit the kitchens in which Henry VIII would have had his dinner prepared for him, and you can climb to the top of the battlements, where centuries before guards would have been poised to take out any intruders with their bows and arrows. The history of castles in Britain is incredibly rich. Some were built by very wealthy families, and some emerged from just a need to keep someone safe and treasure safe. But as time has gone on, some of the greatest castles the world has ever seen have fallen into disrepair and have become ruined. But why is this? Join us today as we look at why are many of Britain's castles ruined? And remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Most of the castles we see today in Britain emerged during the medieval period or after. Many sites were chosen based on the fact they had previous fortifications stood before on them, for example Iron Age hill forts, but they mostly emerged following the Norman conquest. Mott and Bailey castles were built by William the Conqueror in order to keep his newly conquered population under control, and after this as the centuries continued, materials used shifted from being wood and timber to more prominent stone. The stone ruins which you see today were most probably made in the medieval period, and prominent kings such as Edward I built lots of castles, with the prime goal of keeping the people of Britain under control. Edward built a network of strategically placed castles across Wales, for example, to keep the Welsh people under his watchful eye, and still today the most prominent of these, Carnarvon Castle, is used for the investiture ceremony for the Prince of Wales. But why have hundreds of these beautiful and incredible buildings fallen into ruin and disrepair? There are a few reasons for this. The most dramatic and destructive reason for many of Britain's castles being ruined is what occurred to them after the English Civil War of the 17th century, at the hands of Oliver Cromwell and Parliament. Many of Britain's greatest castles were slighted, this is the act of deliberately breaking or damaging a high status building such as a castle or fortification. For example the beautiful and huge Corfe Castle in Dorset was slighted in 1646, and when you walk around the ruins you really do think what an incredibly amazing castle this would have been. Also you consider the huge amount of gunpowder which would have been needed to cause so much damage to the structure. Castles themselves are not just for military purpose, but were also used for the administration over counties, and the reason that Parliament ordered a number of castles to be destroyed was to put them beyond military use, should the Royalists following the Civil War rise up again. It was to intentionally destroy them, so nobody in the future could use them. This destruction was more than just damaging a few turrets, it often led to a castle completely being blown up, with the rubble still being there to see today. This is the case at Corfe, when you walk through the ruins that fell from the main keep or great tower, you think about the sheer amount of gunpowder needed to cause this much damage, it must have been huge. There were many different methods of slighting castles, for example using gunpowder, but other methods used were to light a fire against wooden structures, or to undermine the structure. Mining under a tower was sometimes enough to make them collapse and fall, but Parliament went further by even draining wells and water supplies to stop them being inhabited, and also filling in ditches. There were usually two stages to slighting, the first being the destruction of the actual castle, the second being the prevention of the site being used again. Often many of the materials in the stone were stolen to be used for other buildings, for example building churches or building villages that still today can be found nearby the site. Some slighting did occur earlier during the Middle Ages, but it is with the effect of the English Civil War and Cromwell's worry for further trouble caused by royalists that most of England's castles today remain ruined. It is incredibly sad, the damage had already been done by Cromwell with the execution of King Charles I and his forcing of Puritan laws onto England. Yes rebellions were likely and could have occurred, but to damage a huge part of the landscape and a massive part of England's history was unforgivable. It was a skill to dismantle or slight a castle, similar to how it was a skill to bring down old chimneys associated with the Industrial Revolution by a steeplejack. Destruction was targeted on specific parts, 
and even chapels and great halls did not stand a chance against the destruction. Some were completely destroyed, and the sites today have been lost to time, and nothing except the earthworks or a hill or a mot stand. For me it is a shame that slighting did take place, especially when you look at how the monarchy was restored shortly after Cromwell's death, but along with the execution of the king, the desecration of castles and historic buildings has to be one of the most significant effects of the English Civil War. But there are other reasons why castles have fallen into decay and disrepair, and one is simply how expensive it is to rebuild elements of the defences, and how much money it costs to repair parts and maintain. Today many of Britain's castles are looked after by charities, such as English Heritage and National Trust, with visitor fees and membership money going towards keeping castles and historic buildings alive. Without these charities many would have fallen into complete ruin, and would be uninhabitable and not safe to visit. However the cost of rebuilding and maintaining a castle for many was too much, and as time went on, families ended up selling castles to other people, who could in turn then not afford to pay and maintain them. The sheer cost of buying stone to repair areas, or to buy roofing materials, would have been enough to bankrupt some. Because of this, they abandoned castles, and simply left them to fall into disrepair. When castles were ordered to be built by kings and queens, they had financial backing, through the amount of money raised through taxes, to keep fortifications healthy and working. But as time went on, many were sold on to less wealthier people. Some were even gifted. One palace that once was supposed to be the greatest palace in King Henry VIII's kingdom was non such palace, but today nothing remains of the Tudor palace, as it was gifted to one of Charles II's mistresses, who then sold off the stone to pay for gambling debts. Today even village churches are appealing in Britain for donations to pay for new roofs and improvements, such as the cost of modern building, but imagine how much it would cost to fully restore ruins of medieval castles, it would cost an absolute fortune. Another reason for many of Britain's castles being in ruin is the fact that the elements have damaged them over time. Many have stood for 8, 9 or even 10 centuries as time has gone on and the wind, rain and snow has caused damage to the stonework and the castle. There are some extreme cases. One which comes to mind is Rufus Castle in Portland in Dorset. As time has gone on, the cliffside has slowly edged back, and Rufus Castle today sits very precariously on the edge of a cliff. When we say on the edge, we literally mean the edge as well. There may be a time in a few centuries where Rufus Castle may just fall into the sea. Today it sits in someone's back garden, but due to erosion and weather, it might not be there forever. In February 2021, a large part of a wall at Hurst Castle fell into the sea, and today it's still being repaired, and is a major project for English heritage to make the castle safe, and to repair it to its former standing. Another example is Kenilworth Castle, which was also slighted during the Civil War, but the building materials used were red sandstone. As time has gone on, the weather has affected this, and sandstone isn't the best material to build with anyway. If you were to touch the walls of Kenilworth, you would find a sandy sediment on your hands, hinting that the stone over time is succumbing to the elements, with it becoming weathered. Some of the greatest castles sit up very high too, for example Scarborough Castle, it sits upon a headland above the seaside town. Whenever you are up there and it's raining, the wind and rain batters down, which over the centuries may cause damage to the stonework. It's so high up that the elements smash against the walls. This is also the case at Corf Castle mentioned earlier, which even has to shut sometimes when the weather is bad, such are the conditions on top. Any building over centuries weathers, the houses we live in today may not be around in centuries, however castles have succumbed to a number of centuries of weathering, so repairs are carried out when they can be afforded to combat this, but there are some exceptions. To finish off the video, let's talk about a number of exceptions to the cases we've put forward. One of these outliers are the palaces and castles owned today and looked after by Her Majesty's Royal Palaces or Historic Royal Palaces. These still maintain royal palaces owned by the Queen today, which means that a huge amount of restoration work and money can be spent on them to keep them in the best shape. For example, the Tower of London is regularly receiving inspections to its stonework, towers and more to ensure that it remains in the best condition as it's most probably the oldest castle in England, with the White Tower being created after the Norman Conquest. 
one of the biggest helps to the tower, Hampton Court Palace, Kensington Palace, Kew Palace and Hillsborough Castle, all owned by the charity, is the admission costs that tourists pay to visit the sites. This generates a significant proportion of the money needed to carry out repairs. If you visit these sites then you'll realise that they are kept in remarkable condition compared to other castles. There's hardly any ruined parts and many have been restored to breathtaking conditions. A final exception is Warwick Castle that began life as a medieval stronghold. Even the King of England was once held there as a prisoner but over time it became a rather ornate and grand country house. It fell into the hands of Charles Greville, the seventh and last Earl of Warwick, to live at the castle. He became known as the Duke of Hollywood as he began to search for a career in the movies in America, but one reason why he did this was because of the cost of Warwick Castle's upkeep. The money he was earning was going to the castle and eventually he handed over control of it to his son, who then sold it to the Madame Two Swords and Two Swords Group, who operate the castle today as a visitor attraction. This shows that despite the strong title and the rich history of the Earl of Warwick, he could not afford to pay for the upkeep, and it eventually found itself in the hands of a multi-million pound corporation. So many of Britain's castles are ruined for a number of reasons. Through the destructive intent of Oliver Cromwell to put them out of use, or through the fact they are not financially viable, or they cost too much to repair. Castles today are still a prominent part of the nation's story, and still today the ruins make an amazing day out. When you visit a castle, try to imagine what the past was like, and whose footsteps you may be treading in. For all you know, you might be walking on the same patch of grass that Elizabeth I did. You may be in the same great hall that Henry VIII was charmed by Anne Boleyn inside of, or you may be on the same patch of grass that one of the king's rivals lost his head. The past is a wonderful thing, where we preserve it and learn from the stories. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.